How far, ya akhwan, is something, wallahi, not to be taken lightly. The majority of the reasons why Muslims end up in hellfire for a, for a while, they are the sins that we take for granted. They're forbidden, but they're not major. And we don't take them as important. We say, it's just a sin, man. It's all right, just a little bit. It's just a kiss. It's just a look. It's just a, a lie. It's just a little cheat. It's just a little theft. It's just once. It's okay. You keep doing it. You keep repeating it. That's the danger. So Rasul Sallallahu says with great sorrow, many of the people of my ummah will enter hellfire because they take minor sins for granted and therefore that becomes a ritual, a, a habit for them. So some people have false hope. God will forgive me. God will forgive me. You're sick. You're ill. You need to cure yourself. God cannot be fooled. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so these people in hellfire now are burning. They have been given clothing made of some type of fire. They have been given clouds that look like clouds of rain. But when they rain, they rain acid. Well, they have been given food. And when they eat it, they choke. And Allah says in the Quran, their intestines disintegrate. They drink certain fluids that when they bring their faces close to the dish, the skins of their face begin to burn and it melts into the bowl. There are so many descriptions that no heart can ever imagine. They begin to scream, a disturbing, terrifying sound of scream. Saying, oh, our Lord, please take us out. Take us out and let us try again. Give us another chance. If we do this again, then we are truly oppressors to ourselves. And Allah doesn't even reply to them. Allah doesn't speak to them. When they scream out like that, the angels who are in hellfire torturing them reply to them. They say to them, be quiet, silence. If you are to be returned, you'll do exactly the same thing. We have given you chances and opportunities and given you the warning. You heard it. You understood it, but you mocked. You mock those who warned you. You tease those who warned you. You made fun of Allah's message and messengers. It's throughout the Quran it says this. The angels keep replying to them about this mockery. The guardian of hellfire, his name is Malik. He has never smiled since the day hellfire was created. He has no remorse. He has no feelings of sensitivity. He is desensitized to all types of horror. No feelings. Doesn't feel sorry for anyone. And he was the only angel in heaven whom the Prophet ﷺ, when he ascended up then Isra al Mi'raj, he greeted him and he only replied without a smile. Every other angel smiled and welcomed him. He just said, Wa alaykum as -salam. He said, Who is this? Jibreel salam said, He is Malik. He has never smiled since the day hellfire was created. It is recorded in one hadith that a man who lived very luxurious in this life will be dipped in hellfire once for a few seconds and then he will be asked, Do you remember any luxury? He'll say, I swear by God, I never had any luxury in my life. He forgets it because of the pain. The people of hellfire will turn to the angels that are torturing them, then to the guardian of hellfire. And they will ask him, please ask your Lord to perish us, destroy us. We don't want to live anymore. We don't want to live anymore. The reply comes to them after 1000 years. They're waiting anxiously for that reply. Can you imagine? An anxious hope that you will now finally be destroyed. The reply comes to them. You are to stay in there forever. And the disbeliever, the kafir, the rejecter of faith, the challenger will say in hellfire, I wish I was turned into soil. Allahu Akbar. There are many types of tortures in hellfire. We ask Allah to save us from them. There are still Muslims in hellfire. And so the people of heaven who are allowed to be given intercession to intercede for people, members of their family and friends, they will be called out and said, you have an opportunity to save members of your family and friends in hellfire. O memorize of the Quran who applied it, come. O martyrs, come and so on. And then they will intercede. The Prophet ﷺ said in a Sahih Hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, any person who has an atom's worth of Tawheed, absolute monotheism in Allah, belief and in practice, they will be saved from hellfire. One day they'll be saved, sooner or later. This is a hope, but don't take it for granted.
There will be people who used to pray, but they end up in hellfire. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's in the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hellfire to those who pray. Those who when do come to pray, they are neglectful of their prayers. So they pray on and off. They pray carelessly. They pray without wudu sometimes. They are the same people who do good actions just to show off in front of people. So when they pray, they pray to please people. people to look like righteous people. These people end up in hellfire. However, some of them who prayed some prayers sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or did some actions sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after burning, they will have a spot on their head. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after people enter heaven, he'll keep coming out and going back in, saying, Oh my Lord, there are still members of my ummah in hellfire. Please save them. Oh my Lord, your promise is true and this is your promise to me. Allah gave only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among all the prophets this promise, that he will be the only one allowed to save his followers. No other prophet had been given this privilege. So we are privileged to be from the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yeah? And so Allah will say to the angels, Go to the request of my messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Allah loves him the most. Go! Every single Muslim believer that's in hellfire, that has an atom's worth of tawheed, take them out. And the angels will go looking at them and they will know them by a sign. The sign will be the spot on their head, as we said, according to the Sahih Hadith. They will save them and take them out. And they will take them to a particular river, the river of life. They'll take them there. And they are unconscious and their bodies have been charcoaled, it's burnt. And they'll be placed into this river and washed and then placed on the banks of the river. And suddenly their bodies transform from ugliness to beauty, from darkness to light. And they will still have one sign, the same place on their forehead becomes the sign in heaven. People will know that these are the people who were saved from hellfire. They will smile to them and love them. And they will come to them and they will be called Masakin Ahlul Jannah. The poor people of paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hell. For Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ghadabika wa nar. Oh Allah, keep us away from the sins that make us enter into hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins. He's the most merciful. And we ask Him for paradise and the meeting of Him and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, in, in Jannah. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Qul qul ya Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين